Well, I'm Marina Noble from the Lux Travel and I'm here with the wonderful Dan here, one of the founders of Access Consciousness. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. Glad to be with you. Wonderful to be here with you. We are in sunny New South Australia. Dan, and it's what, beautiful. Yeah. What's doing you here? Uh, I'm facilitating classes in Access Consciousness yeah. and uh, I have the fortune of coming here pretty much for the last five years. I've been here at least a month at the end of every year. Perfect. So the rest of the world is in winter. I get to follow summer. Totally. <laughs> and I'm going to Europe next month. What am I thinking? Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, Northern, Central? Come. Ah, okay. Well, if you have to go to Europe at this time of year, not a bad choice. Ah, good. <laughs> um, tell me, with the classes that you've been doing, what are they about? They're about changing any area of your life you want to change. Like the class I just finished facilitating yes. is called Being You, Changing the World. It's a three and a half day class based on a book that I wrote. And it's really about giving people the tools to start changing all the crap that hasn't worked for them and, and have a fundamentally different way of being in the world that's actually a lot more happy, a lot more joyful, a lot more abundant, with a lot more ease. Wow. Wouldn't that be amazing? Oh, it's fun. That it's wonderful. Life. And your life, either do you follow or do you walk your talk? Oh, let me tell you, I do my best. I mean, I will not give somebody a tool that I haven't used myself. And so most of what I speak about in the in these classes is a lot of things that I've used, but also things I've worked with other people on that have created success in changing areas that they've never been able to change before. Hmm, wonderful. I definitely would love to do one of those classes. Come, 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 come. <laughs> and tell me your life. It looks very... Exciting. It looks like it's full of opportunities, full of travel, full of business, I'm sure, ideas and money, yes. creation. Um, what is abundance for you personally? Abundance for me is really receiving everything the universe has to offer. You know, we live in an abundant universe and so many people don't recognize it. I mean, even people who have a lot of money don't have a sense of abundance with their money, you know, where it's ease for them. And so what, for me, what it's really about is, is, the receiving of everything that's available and also taking that though and exploring and creating greater possibilities from what's already there. And has your life always been full of joy, full of <laughs> happiness, and money? Oh yes, and I fart rainbows. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, actually, uh, it's interesting because 16 years ago I was at a place in my life where I was literally going to end my life. I had been going through intense, severe depression for about three years. And I finally got to a point one day where I said, universe, either my life changes or I'm out of here. And a week later, I found something called Access Consciousness. Mm -hmm. I had one session, and it so dynamically changed my sense of myself and my interaction with the world. And, it, and I remember leaving that session, whereas I walked into it depressed. I remember leaving the session, looking up at the sky going, has it always been this beautiful here? Yeah. And it gave me a gratitude for being alive that I didn't know was possible. And it... Truly, I never contemplated killing myself again. Well, I was a chiropractor at the time, so yes. within a short few months, what I found was I transitioned from doing chiropractic to doing access consciousness because it created the change that I had always wanted to create as a chiropractor that I couldn't. Amazing. And what are some of the tools you could share with people who are struggling today but would love to have a change in their life? Oh, so many. I mean, we have probably 8,000 tools, if not more at this point. But one of the biggest things that you can do is to start to ask questions in your life. Because a question always empowers, an answer always disempowers. What happens for most people is they're sort of walking to try to get to this place, and they've been walking in the same direction, on the same path for so long, they've got these walls to the left and right, mm -hmm. and they can't see over, they can't see around, they can't see through them. When you ask a question, it's like different doorways and different possibilities open in these things that look like solid walls before. And so you could ask a question as simple as, how does it get any better than this? And you can ask it when something good happens, and it makes it even better. You can ask it when something bad happens, and it makes it at least a little bit better, and it starts changing it to give you a different choice. And another great question is, what's right about me I'm not getting? A lot of people walk around in the wrongness of them. Even some of the most successful people in the world, they're doing it to try to get out of the sense that they're somehow wrong. And so when you ask what's right about me I'm not getting, what it does, it opens up that possibility for you to see that there's actually something right with you and right with what you're choosing. Wow. I love the question, what else is possible? Yes, that's one of my that's favorites what, also. Yeah. <laughs> In every situation, you know, something happens, something occurs, and it's like, wow, what else is possible here? Because that just opens everything up. 
And it opens it up to the possibilities that are available. What so many of us do is we try to we try to put everything into a little box of how it should show up. Yeah. And what, what else is possible? It's like, well, okay, so here's your box right now. What else is possible? And it breaks the box and you know, then your your birds can fly free. You know, it's like and other possibilities can show up. And when people ask for possibilities, the weird part is the universe delivers. It's like we ask the universe, like, cool, thank you for finally asking. And one of the things that I've noticed with a lot of people is they say, I want this, I want this, I want this. Well, want means to lack. So get rid of that word, okay? But also, when you say that, rather, and I say, okay, so have you asked for it? And they go, what do you mean? So, well, you say you want your income to double. Have you asked for that? No, I've just been wanting it. I'm like, how long have you been wanting it? For like eight years. I'm like, oh, okay. Ask and you shall receive is one of the truths of the universe. And nobody seems to know it. And, you know, I think what happened was they hid it in the Bible so nobody would believe it. That's too funny. <laughs> well, I'm kidding, of course. But, of course. you know, it sort of makes a point. Ah, definitely. Um... Well, I created the Lux Traveler. It's because it gives me enormous joy to send people on a trip where they come back full of gratitude, full of joy, full of happiness. they overwhelmed with life. Bring the key to my eye. They say, we've been on the best holiday ever. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. And then they say in the very next sentence, we wish we can have the same holiday in 10 years' time. And I go, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Why have you already decided for the next 10 years you cannot have another amazing yes. experience like that? Yes. What tools can we give people to help bring more of that in every day? Well, let me start with, I love the fact that, you know, I wrote this book, Being You, Changing the yes. World. You're like, travel well, change the world. You know, it's like, because it is, it can be a life-changing experience if somebody will allow it to. But because, it's one of the things that I found that is so vital for us to get is that your point of view creates your reality. Reality does not create your point of view. So when you have the point of view that I can only have this when I'm on vacation, that's how you create your life. So what you want to look at is, is that really true that you can only have it on vacation or that you can only have it once every 10 years? Or is that just the point of view that you have? Now, by the way, sound wise, there's a boat going by everybody. So that's what happens when you film on the Noosa River. I'm just saying. So (laughs) we're just letting you know what's going on here. Um, And so what happens is if you instead, the question you were asking, like, what else is possible? If people would actually look at their lives and get that sense of the way it is to be on vacation and then ask, and here's another question you can ask, what will it take to create this as my life? And the funny part is, some people out there who are doing things that are totally different, like Timothy Ferris, the guy that wrote the four hour work week, yes. and four hour body, and four, I mean, brilliant man. And everybody's like, how do you do this? It must not be real. He must, it, no, it's because he's willing to ask questions that open up different possibilities. Like, hey, what would it take to have this as my life? Yeah. And so that's another great question you can ask. If you've had a great experience, you want to ask a few things. You want to go, if you like it, what would it take to have more of this in my life? Yeah. Or if you really love the vacation thing, what would it take to have this as my life? And then also, how does it get any better than this? That question we talked about earlier, something you use a lot, where you go on the vacation and rather than going, oh no, I'm home, <laughs> you go, wow, how does it get even better than that vacation? And what would it take to wake up tomorrow and feel like I'm having another vacation yes. right here creating my life? Yeah, exactly. You know, let that vacation inspire you. Don't let it make you depressed when you get back home. To create more magic in your everyday life. Exactly. You know, use these elements of inspiration that are available to you. If there's something, if if there's a great meal that you've had, you go, okay, what would it take to have more of that? I mean, the house we're sitting in in Noosa, I used to come here and when I first came to Australia, we stayed in a travel lodge in the middle of Sydney that <laughs> had... You the, didn't know me then back hello, then. Hello, exactly. You I know. I'd have been like, hook a brother up. You know, I need some help here, you know. But I also didn't have that sense of abundance in my world at the time, you know. Yeah. And so this is why I say asking questions. Things may not change immediately, but it definitely will change over time. But you have to head in that direction if you're ever going to get there. You know, it's like if you're going on a trip, you have to at least go to the airport and head in that direction. You know, if you want to go to a trip to Tahiti, go on a trip to Tahiti, you've got to find a way to get there, you know. And this is, if you start asking these questions, like, what would it take to have this? How does it get any better than this? What else is possible here? What would it take to bring more of this into my life? You start heading in that direction energetically, and the universe will support you. It will help you. Yeah, and this, and so 
literally on my first trip here, I was staying in this travel lodge, and the room we're in right now was the size of the room, okay? And there were three guys in that room, okay? And there was me, Gary, the founder of Access, and this other guy that was putting on the classes here, and it was horrendous. And, you know, fast forward 16 years later, I mean, this this house is an example of a question I asked. If you look out there, there are jet skis on the dock. Yes. It, that, not that are mine, which is one of the reasons I come to New Sin, stay on the river, okay? And I'm so grateful and blessed that I can. But once again, 16 years ago, that was not a possibility at and all. And what else is possible from now on? Exactly. And that <laughs> also is the question. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because when when people see people who seem to have a certain level of abundance or or staying in a nice house, or have jet skis or something, they tend to separate from that, and they go, oh, well, I could never have that. But that point of view will create that as your reality. Please don't do that. Instead, go, what would it take for me to have that? Totally different, I mean, same amount of energy. Yeah. One is created, one is destructive. And I was taught by my family to do the, oh, I will never have that. I remember being um, in Idaho where uh, one half of my family lived for a long time. And we were driving, and I was a young kid. I was probably 10 or something. And I was driving with my aunts in a car, and this Merce convertible Mercedes came up and passed us and zoomed off, you know, just going like a bat out of hell. And I was like, that's an awesome car! <laughs> and my aunt turns to me with total superiority in her poverty, and she says, those rich people aren't happy. <laughs> and and I that's looked, not for you? <laughs> that's exactly what she was trying to say. You should not do that. And I looked around at the people in the car, and I'm like, they couldn't be any less happy than we are. Are you kidding? At least they can eat nice food and drive nice cars and pay rent, you know, which we had a trouble doing at the yeah. time, you know. And so, but I remember making the choice in that moment. I'm like, I'm going to at least try it. And I don't know what it's going to take, but I'm going to try it. Yeah. And I literally, I got 16 years ago. It was like I didn't have financial abundance. But as I started asking questions, started using these tools, what happened was my willingness to receive started opening up really dynamically. And one of the beautiful things about people who go on nice vacations a lot of times is, for some reason, they're willing to receive. Yeah. And usually they're also, the weird part is they're also willing to spend money while they're on vacation. But I think a lot of times they do it because they go, oh, well, I can spend money because it's this week, so I can do this and I can treat myself and I can actually be happy with what I get and all that sort of thing. <laughs> you know, but it's like, once again, why are we not having that as our lives? Yeah. It's just a choice. I mean, fundamentally, is is it... Is it, you choose it now and it shows up tomorrow? No, but you have to make the choice and realize it is a choice for you to create in order for you to get there. And this is one thing I think a lot of people are missing, that they've never been given the memo on, you know, that it's a choice and you can actually change these things. But you have to recognize that you've got to start by choosing it and then ask questions. And then things will show up by, as, by virtue of asking the question. Different things will start to show up in your life and different possibilities will show up and different people will show up and say, hey, I've got this going on. Do you want to contribute or do you want to be part of this? And then you have to have the courage to another question you want to ask when things like that show up. So let's say you've asked to change your financial situation or yeah. you've asked to make your life a vacation. Because for me, my life is like most people's vacations. And I, you know, and I say that not from, wow, look at me. I'm so special. I'm like, I say that because this is what we could create if we would choose it. Yeah, because it exactly. is my choice. And I love so much what I do for a living. Yes. You know, I love so much what I do with access and seeing people change that I, I don't work a day in my life because I love what I do for work, you know. And I get to stay in nice places, etc. But so, sorry, as I was saying, one of the things you want to do is when these ch other choices come up, things to do, like somebody will say, hey, you want to invest in this? Or do you want to go work here or something? You want to ask, what will my life be like in five years if I choose this? And what will my life be like if I don't? Not what will my life look like, because everybody tries to see their future. You can't see your future. You can sense it energetically. So you want to go, what will my life be like in five years if I choose this? And you'll get a sense energetically, and choosing it will have this, not choosing it will have this. Well, then it's probably going to be greater if you choose it. But then you have to actually have the courage to leap off the cliff. And this is where a lot of people also get stuck, because they would rather have the suffering they know than the possibility they don't know. That's also a choice. And that was my next question. What do you think are some of the lies people tell themselves that stop them from even perceiving a possibility of a greater future? I think that, as we just talked about, I think one of the other biggest things that sticks them is 
they have some idea that the change that that what will have to occur for them to change is not within their ability to do, number one. And number two, the other things that will change in their life are going to be worse for them rather than greater than what they already have. And I found that to be so not true. Every time I've ever made a change, every time I've ever changed a relationship or changed a, a direction we were going in the business or changed uh, somebody who was working in the business or whatever, it always got greater. And so now I don't fear change. And I think a lot of people in every walk, in every area of life, in every social strata, in every financial demographic, fear change. And and the other thing that I've noticed, which is interesting, is people will set goals and not acknowledge it. And they'll say, oh, I want to have, I don't know, $100,000 in the bank or something. And once they get there, if they don't acknowledge they set that as a goal and that they achieve the goal, then they go back and they will destroy it and start over. Because the original meaning of goal was jail. Well. Yeah. True. Yeah. And it's really kind of a huge thing, especially for people who are creative and looking to create more. Because what happens is, in, if instead, if instead of setting a goal, if you said, oh, I've got this target. Because a target, you can shoot at a target as many times as you need to until yeah. you hit it. And let's say you're shooting arrows into a target, you can hit the bullseye and then you can split the same arrow, you know? So there's all these possibilities available with the target. So, what I tell people is rather than setting goals, set targets. And then just ask, what's it going to take to create this? What's it going to take to achieve this? And it's amazing what shows up. And, but also, it's also kind of really amazing how easy it can be for people. You know, and so we've talked about, we've had some of these conversations, and I know some people out there watching are like, yeah, just choose to be happy, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's basically where it starts at least. But then, and the whole thing that Access Consciousness gives you is the tools to change the places where you don't have those choices available. And the way of looking at things that actually gives you a large enough perspective to see beyond just the, the limited box of your problems to something beyond it that would be possible that you might want to choose, but also how to get there, in, in a sense, energetically. Yeah. And that's the thing, that's why, from my point of view, it's so dynamic in what it does. Guys, you can choose. Choice is the key. <laughs> well, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us. Thank today. you, Marina. Very and, grateful um, to have you here. And I'm very grateful to speak to you too today. Tell me, if people want to find out more about you, more about what you do, how do they do that? You can go to drdainheer.com, D-R-D-A-I-N-H-E-E-R.com, or you can go to accessconsciousness.com. Uh, if you go to drdeanhere.com, there there are a couple, there's an online training that's free, my gift to you, uh, an attempt to pay forward what I got out of this work, and there's also if another free video series there where you get a tool every couple of weeks, I call it the Tour of Consciousness, it's from my travels around the world, you get to see some beautiful places like Noosa and get a tool that will hopefully enrich your life and make it better, that's also my gift to you, because truly one of the things that i found is is the more generous we are with our brothers and sisters on this planet, the more comes to all of us. More and abundant of truly. wonderful things we have in our lives. Yes, and it really does work that way. And so one of my greatest gifts is making these videos and sending them out to people as my gift, you know, yeah. as a way of saying, hey, here's something to prop you up when you need it, you know? Here's something that might change the thing that's going on in your life right now. And the number of emails I get from people who say, Thank you so much. I'm on your Tour of Consciousness email list, and it's almost like you're in my head, because every time I really need to change something, you, you give there. me the exact tool to do it. Uh, I'm like, that's so wonderful. So And that's it, magic. It is. And it's part of the blessing of being alive, you know? Part of the gift of being alive. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much again. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful, and we'll talk today soon again. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys.